Ten years ago, I was a young master's student at the Technical University of Munich studying astrodynamic. And at the beginning of the semester, I needed to change some stuff on my study plan. And so I needed to stop the professor and talk to him coming out of the class. So I stopped him and then asked for a meeting. And then he slowly turned towards me in silence. He looks down to me in a condescending way. And just before walking away, he said four words. Talk to my secretary. And then he walks off. As many German professor, he was the head of an institute. He was also owning a company on the side of, of his professional title as professor. He had a lot of money and everyone knew about it because he was driving one of the most expensive Mercedes that we had seen and we all knew it because he had a place reserved next to the main door of the university with a little sign which was written, Professor Doctor Doctor. And every morning, the Mercedes was there. It was very clear, and as a student in Germany, like most students in Germany, the amount of money people have to study is below the poverty threshold limit, a good situation to look between rich and poor. A few years later, I was in Norway. I was uh, invited for an interview for a doctoral degree at NTNU, and I was going to meet uh, the man that was going to be my supervisor, and I was a little bit nervous, because I had heard that Norway was even richer than Germany. And so I came to the interview, and then it was not a shock to, to hear. The first time I, hear, I heard at the interview is that the professor couldn't make it to the interview. So we started, and there was a lovely woman with me, which actually I learned throughout the interview that she also was professor. And at one point, she took the phone, and then she called, and she started to talk in this funny language that I didn't understand. And, and then she hung up and said, um, actually, uh, your professor wants to meet, meet you. We just didn't want to say, but he is on paternity leave. And he has a sick child at his place. But he's offering that you could uh, go with another of the professor in the department with his car and then go to his place and talk to him there. So I went to his place with the car of the other professor, which was a very normal car, to the house, which was a very normal house. And I sat there for two hours having my interview for my PhD with his sick, sick kid that was newly born. Beautiful. Beautiful difference as well. The difference in wealth in Norway is much smaller than all of the other countries I've experienced. I've lived in five different countries in the last 15 years. But to the point of, of, of this debate, Erik or Ufordragle, I'm going to take you through a Norwegian adventure here. Because some of the people coming from abroad, meeting Norwegians abroad or in Norway, may feel that certain behaviors may appear a bit weird, a bit rude, and sometimes some people may even say intolerable. They get very shocked by some of the behaviors. When you sit at a table and the conversation goes down all around the world, you're going to try to comment about something. You say, oh, nice flowers. And the lady may say, oh, thank you. I've been growing them with my mom since I'm a little girl. I say, oh, really? So you like gardening? And then the conversation goes on. And you forget that it was awkward just a few moments ago. Norway, it's a little bit different. <laughs> Before coming to Norway, I've lived in Spain for two years. In Spain, when you come into a shop, you say, hola. And then the cashier replies, hola. And then everyone else in the shops replies, hola. And it looks like this. And then I was back there this summer. And then I came back to Norway. And then I came into the Matusen and I said, hi, hi. <laughs> Then suddenly people are wondering why you're saying hi. Because greetings mean something different in Norway. I come from a society where every morning at work, you shake hands with every man and you kiss every woman. It takes half an hour. <laughs> and if you don't do this, you're rude and uneducated. And when I came to Norway, I, I, was, I was taking my doctoral degree and I was sitting in my office and at 4 o'clock my door was open and people were passing by. No one was saying goodbye. No one was even acknowledging that I was there. And so I started to feel, maybe they don't like me. Maybe I'm not welcomed. But actually, politeness means something different in Norway. Politeness is much more about not disturbing others 
rather than obeying by these social codes. But if no one tells you, it's very easy to misinterpret because we all see the world through what I call cultural glasses. We interpret behaviors of others based on what it means in our own culture or in our own social cultural norms or status, where we are. Another way to say it, the lens through which your brain sees the world shapes your reality. If you can change the lens, not only can you change the way you interpret behaviors of others, but you can change the way people relate to cultural differences and social cultural differences. And my point here in this six-minute intervention is that sometimes Norwegian as a country is seen as very rich, and sometimes abroad or foreigners in Norway may feel that some of the behaviors are rude or intolerable, and you hear it sometimes from foreigners. And my point here is that very often this is based on a cultural misinterpretation. One last thing before I finish. What you said in the very beginning was very interesting. You named three things that rich people are doing, and I just got to know there that um, they usually don't ask for help, and that um, they do not offer help either, and they sit the furthest away from other people. And when I wrote this down, I thought, hey, <laughs> that could look like Norwegians. <laughs> so there might be something there. Um, thank you. Looking forward for the debate. Thanks. <laughs>